we doing? Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. I'm super excited for tonight. I've honestly kind of been like, I don't know. I've been procrastinating this like all week. It's been like a super crazy week and just been like, I'm honestly like so excited for this message just because I feel like I really needed to hear this this week. And I feel like honestly in this season and like this time of our lives and coming towards the end of the year and like us starting to get ready for summer and like preparing to be, you know, upperclassmen or going into our next year of high school or, you know, us juniors being seniors and then seniors, you guys are going to college next year. Like we're in a season of our lives where we get so caught up and so like ready to move forward. So I think that tonight will be really good for you guys and, and really good for me too, to just kind of like sit back, relax and enjoy like the present moment and what God has for us tonight. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pray us in, and let's get to it. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for all the amazing, beautiful people in this room tonight, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would move in ways that are unexpected tonight, and that um, if I were to say anything that's of you, that you would let it resonate with these students, Lord, um, and that this week they would, they would go out and just glorify you and, and love each other like you love them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. So last week... Jack talked about our mission statement. You can go ahead and throw up that slide. Um, it says, we are a church who firm, firmly believes that Jesus transforms lives through loving relationships with God, with each other, and with those that don't know Jesus yet. So Jack kicked us off with an absolute banger message on talking about relationships with God. And I think that is kind of the perfect way to, you know, get us into tonight and start us off with tonight. Because, you know, you really kind of have to love God before you can love anybody else, in my opinion. And I think that what Jack said last week was perfect uh, just to kind of set us up for this week and when Sav speaks next week on loving the lost. That'll be a great message, too. Um, so, yeah, this week we're just going to be talking about um, Paul and Timothy and kind of their story and how Paul um, was a disciple and, and really mentored and showed Timothy, like, the way before Timothy went out and preached and was a disciple himself. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and turn our Bibles to Acts 16, verses 1 through 5. All righty. Is that on the screen? Perfect. Paul went first to Derby, then Lystra, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought of by believers in Lystra and Iconium. I don't know how to say that very well, but bear with me here. So Paul wanted him to join them on their journey in defense. In difference to the Jew area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left. For everyone knew that his father was a Greek. Then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened and in their faith and grew larger every day. So Paul, this disciple, goes to this town, and he hears about this other disciple, this young man named Timothy, and he knows that he can't do it alone, which we'll come back to. He knows that he needs somebody else to be with him. So Paul at this time is with Silas, and actually my last message that I talked about, Paul, is in this chapter, and if you keep reading, literally verse 16 is when Paul and Silas went to prison and started worshiping and the prison walls fell. So Timothy was there for all of that. Timothy saw Paul and saw Paul's work, and Paul ultimately just trained Timothy to see kind of what was going on. All right, so next, we're going to go ahead and jump to 1 Timothy verses 1 through 5. Let me turn there real quick. All right, this letter is from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, appointed by the command of God our Savior and Christ Jesus, who gives us hope. 
I am writing to Timothy, my true son in my faith. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. When I left Macedonia, I urged you to stay there in Esphius and stop those whose teaching is contrary to the truth. Don't let them waste their time in endless discussion of myths and spiritual pedigrees. These things only lead to meaningless speculations which don't help people live a life in faith in God. So Paul trains Timothy and gets Timothy ready for all these big things. And then he takes him to this place, takes him to where he wants him to be, where God's calling him to be. And he says, dude, here you go. Let's go. Let's do it. Go. Like it's your turn. He sees all the work that Paul's been doing and he does it. Paul trains him and gets him to, to the point where he's like, all right, man, this kid's ready. Let's go. Let's do it. Like, have you guys ever had like a coach or like, like you do like one-on-one -on -one training with somebody or like you're training for like a big showcase or a big tournament and you get to like that final practice and your coach at the end is like, boom, pep talk. Let's go. Like it's time to lock in. Get there. Get ready. Let's go. Like, you know, for me, it was playoffs this year in high school season. We were like all hyped to be there because we were a good seed going into the playoffs we kind of got a tough draw with the first team we played, and we were all, like, super nervous. And then our coach, this, like, super tall, like, funny English-looking dude, is like, all right, guys, I don't know how to say this in his English accent, but let's go. This is it. Lock in. And, it, it, like, you just get ready to go. So that's going to go ahead and bring me um, to my first point, which is going to be have role models. So I want you guys to think for a second here about a role model in your life, and I'll go ahead and explain mine here in a second, but think about somebody in your life that you look up to, somebody in your life that, like, you've seen them do something, and you're like, wow, I want to be that person. Like, wow, this person loves God. This person does their best in everything. They try their hardest. Like, who is it? It could be literally anybody. Mine, for me, has always been my dad, and I've always just looked up to my dad. No matter what, my dad's been there for me. He's been there for others, and he's been there for my whole family. But another person, because I, I mean, a lot of us can say our parents are good role models, right? Well, I hope so. Or role models for us, because, you know, we live with them all the time. But we went on a mission trip this past March, and it was a life-changing experience. And there was one day that we were tasked with focusing on one other person in our group. And it's kind of funny, because I got Jack, and Jack got me, and we were the last two people to go. And I'll never forget, like, looking over at Jack in, like, the last moments. And I'm like, he has me, and I have him. This is weird. So he went first and kind of just, like, talked. And I was like, wow. Like, it all started to come back to me. Ever since I was a little sixth grade kid, you know, running around screaming here in garage and had Micah as my youth pastor. And then seventh grade, Micah moved away. And I was like, wow, this sucks. Like, I don't even want to go to church anymore. Like, what is this? That, like, Micah was my biggest role model, my, my biggest supporter, like, I wanted to be Micah so bad. And then he moved to Minnesota, and I was like, oh, this sucks. So, but then, you know, COVID hit. Jack got hired. I was like, oh, dude, I know Jack. I literally, like, put a bunch of Starburst with wrappers on him in front of him, like, in my mouth, and just acted like an idiot, and he thought it was funny. So why wouldn't he like me? And then that same time, we had him over my family. You know, Sanders family likes to have everybody over, and we always, my mom's a big Oh, people, 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 let's have them all over. So we had him over, we talked to him, you know, we, we had all the group there. We had Jordan, Micah, Jack, played spike ball. I was like, oh, this is it, this is awesome. And from that point on, it was like, dude, Jack, I wanna be Jack. Like, I, this is my role model. And my dad, my dad got lunch with him yesterday and he told me, the first thing he told me when he came back, he's like, Man, dude, Jack's a big, hairy, Jesus-loving man. And he's right. He is. He's got a killer beard, killer hair. I mean, the hair's all right, I guess. Could be better. But he is. He goes out, he loves Jesus, and he loves on you guys. And to me, that's what a role model is. And I want to be that someday. I want to go out, and I don't care what you look like, what, you, what you're into, who you are as a person. I just want to be your friend. And I want to love on you and show the love of Jesus to you like Jack did to those kids in Mexico, and like everybody on that trip did to those kids in Mexico. Because seeing that, man, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps this a thing. This place would not be this place without Jack, 
without you guys, without all the love that, that Jesus has for this place and has for each and every one of you that you spread to each other. And that's so important. So that's going to bring me to my next point. We're going to go back, if we could go back to that first um, part, the first slide of, yeah, perfect. So, oh, never mind. It's the second part, I think. Yeah, okay, sweet. But, so what, what Paul is doing here is he's working in Timothy through love. He doesn't work in Timothy because, you know, he's supposed to do that. Like, he's getting paid to do it. Like, that's his job. That's not why he does it. He's not getting paid. I guarantee you he's not getting paid, bro. He's literally walking in, like, sand, like you know, like, Birkenstocks? He's walking in, like, crappy Birkenstocks all around the desert with this kid that probably doesn't know what he's doing. And he's showing him what to do. Like, how many of you guys have ever had, like, a job or, like, gotten a new job or, like, met somebody new, and you're just kind of like, hmm, this is awkward. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, what am I supposed to do? And you ask so many questions. You're like, oh, I'm being so annoying. Like, there's no way this kid likes me. There's no way I'm going to come back here. Like, you just get so scared that you're being annoying or, like, just being a burden overall. But Paul, he doesn't care. This kid could ask him so many questions, and, and he could do probably whatever he wanted, and Paul's still going to take this kid miles and miles in the hot desert. No matter where they're going, Timothy's right by his side, and he's showing him everything. He does it out of love. So that brings me to my second point, which is do all things in love. I've talked about it before. We all know. The Bible talks about it thousands of times. Love is number one. What did Jesus do that one thing that sticks out to me about Jesus, and I had a conversation with one of my buddies last night. We were, we got dropped off at my house, and we were listening to worship music, and I was like, wow, like this is like the perfect song for what I'm talking about tomorrow. And me and this kid are in the car talking about how like, yeah, man, I'm not into all that like rap junk. I don't really care about that kind of music. Like I don't want to hear about all these gangsters and whatever they're doing nowadays. And I was like, dude, like this song is about love. Like, do you guys remember, I don't know if you guys saw this, but my favorite Super Bowl commercial this year was the one about Jesus washing feet. And Jesus is the savior of the world, the biggest person in history. Have you, like, there's, there's TikToks and all these things on, on Instagram that's like, people ask who's the most famous person in the world. 90% of people say Jesus Christ. And that's just crazy to me. But Jesus wasn't this guy that's like, oh, woe is me. You know, I'm the king of kings and lord of lords, son of God. I rose from the dead. No, Jesus washed feet. That's what servants did. Jesus, Jesus wasn't this guy that was like, man, I'm better than you. Help me. I'm better than you. You're supposed to be doing this. Jesus got down on his hands and knees and washed feet. He didn't care who it was. He didn't care what they looked like, what their background was. Jesus was friends with people that weren't even Christians. He was friends with people that didn't like him, and he washed feet. You know, we see this commercial, and it's got it's got people from different backgrounds. It's got, you know, Muslims, the gay people, LGBTQ community, like all of them. Everybody's in this commercial, like this commercial. And he washes all their feet. And I guarantee you that's what he'd do today. He doesn't care what you look like, what you believe in, who you are, where you come from, what your social status is, who you're voting for in the next election. He doesn't care. He loves you and he died for you. And he's going to wash your feet. Why can't we be like that? Like, seriously, why can't we? Give me one reason. I'll take any reason why we can't do that. It's so small. Something that a, a servant would do. You know, you think about, like, what people do, like, nowadays, you know, there's all these high businessmen or whatever. Like, you think about all these people that are higher up than us, and they have thousands of people working for them. Like, you know how much it means when, like, your boss or somebody that's, like, above you helps you with something and is like, yo, man, I'm here for you. Like, I know if any of you guys have a job and your manager comes down and helps you, you know, wash dishes or, for me, clean clubs. Like, it is like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe that I'm doing this. And all Jesus teaches and everything that he does throughout his entire life and throughout the entire Bible is through love. Through love. 
no matter where he is, no matter what he's going through, days before he's about to get crucified and he knows, he knows for a fact he's about to die the most gruesome death known to man. He's loving people. He's eating dinner with them. He's hanging out with them. He's doing whatever he can because that's who Jesus was and that's who we can be too. We don't have to be, you know, better than everybody else. We don't have to be smarter, stronger, better, you know. Everybody blames like all these things or, or their social status. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Their social status is, I used to thrive on how good I was doing in my sport. When I played soccer, dude, I was like, man, if I was having good games, I was on top of the world. Man, I'm better than you. You can't do that. Like, come on, man. Show some respect at practice. I was cocky. I was like, man, I'm, I'm the best. Like, I'm going, I'm going D1. I'm doing all this stuff. No, that's not what matters. Yeah, that's awesome. God gave, God gave you a gift. That's amazing. You know, we got people in here that are D1 going to Tennessee full ride. Like, that's, yeah, give it up. That's, that's amazing. But I guarantee you, that God's going to use that in ways that you're not going to expect it. And God's going to want you to love people no matter what, no matter if you're better than them at sports, taller than them, smarter than them, more popular than them, have more likes on Instagram than them. It's like, I don't get it. Why does our society today have to base everything off of one little thing? And we get so mad, so freaking mad over the littlest things. Like, we get so mad. If somebody, like, gives us a dirty look in the hallway, we're like, ugh, why would I ever talk to that person again? Like, what did I ever do to them? And I'm guilty of it, too. Like, I get it. I'm like, wow. Well, that sucks, you know? It's like, love that person, dude. Show them why they shouldn't give you a dirty look in the hallway. Show them why you are worth loving and worth having a relationship with. That's what Jesus did. Jesus died on the cross and rose again. If that's not worth loving, then I don't know what is. He paid the ultimate price, and we're, we're out here judging people based on, you know, their social status and this and that. But no, no, no. Jesus is with us all the time. Jesus loves us all the time. And that brings me into my next point. And, and this one, if, if you guys are going to leave here with one thing, I want you to leave here with this. Because in all my time, and, and even this week, and... High school, I get it. I'll tell you what the worst feeling in the world is, is being alone. How many, you guys can raise, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'll raise my hand for myself. How many of you guys, at least one point in high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, how many of you guys have felt alone? That's a lot of people. A lot more than probably should feel alone. Because there's, what, 50, 60 kids in here that all love each other? Like, we're all here for the same reason. You are not alone. There is nothing in Christianity, nothing in the Bible that talks about being alone. Not once does God say, nope, do it yourself. I'm not here. Do it. Whatever. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Like, this one's on you. Not once has he done that. God's put people in my life that when I'm at the lowest of lows and I, you know, throw crap at them or, or do something bad to them or you know, shut them out. They're still there. God put the, puts these people in my life. You are not alone. You will never be alone. And I have one last verse. And as the band comes back up, I just want to read it to you guys and leave you with this. It's personally my favorite verse. Uh, Isaiah 41.10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I'll read it one more time, just, you know, dramatic effect. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Now, what I want to do is I want to replace that. It doesn't have to say, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for John is with you. Fear not for Meredith is with you. Fear not for Ben is with you. There's people, you can put people's name in this verse, guys. God puts people in your life. That's God too. Each and every one of you in this room, God's working in you. He's moving to the people with you. You know? Fear not, 
for Aaron is with you. There's always people around you. And there always will be. God's never going to leave you alone. God's never going to throw you in the water and be like, here you go, dude, swim. There's always going to be a life raft. doesn't matter what it is. There's people there for you. Always remember that. And if you guys are feeling alone or feeling like, man, I just have nothing. Like I'm, I'm at a loss right now. Talk to a leader. I guarantee you, I, I promise you, each and every leader in this room would love to have a conversation with you or get lunch with you or do anything with you. They love you. I love you. There's so many people in this room that love you, and they all just want to love and support you like I do. So let's not be alone. Let's be a church that's together. Like the mission statement says, with God, with each other, and with the lost. You know how many more people we can reach if we're with each other? So let's do it. Let's not worry about all that high school drama. Let's love each other. And let's move in ways that God wants us to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for this opportunity. And I thank you for each and every person that that walked into this room tonight, Lord. Father, I thank you that I have the opportunity to speak your word and, and that you put these things on my heart and put it on every person's heart in this room, Lord, and that I have the opportunity to come out and speak. Father, I just thank you for your goodness and your love and the fact that you are always with us and you send people to us. Father, we will never be alone, and that's because of you. Father, I thank you for the price that you paid and that you sent your only son. And I pray that in his name, we would love each other. And in his name, we would move in this time of hardship. And in his name, that we would be the people that this world needs. Because it's a group of people like this that's going to change the world, Lord. Father, I thank you for this group of high school kids, this group of leaders, this group of adults that make this all happen. Father, I just thank you for everything that you've blessed me with and, and blessed each and every person in this room with. Father, I pray that tonight during worship that you would open somebody's eyes, open my eyes, even if it's just one person. Father, move. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Can we give it up for Aaron one more time? Oh, so good, so good, so good. Well, we say it every single week. You are loved and prayed for and accepted here just as you are. If you guys need prayer or you want to get in your powwows, you're welcome to. It is 8 o'clock, but go in peace. We love you guys. Also, no small groups on Wednesday. No small groups on Wednesday. Uh, the Next Gen team is going to Atlanta for a conference, so we will not be here. Do small groups outside of this building if you want. Go do something with your leaders. No small groups.